Hi, and welcome back to Your Autism Game Plan. I'm Joya Vanderlaan. I'm a nurse practitioner, a functional medicine specialist, and an autism mom. Thanks for joining me. Today, I wanna to cover a little bit about magnesium and how it can help your child with autism. So magnesium can help with a lot of different symptoms because it does so many different things in our body. For one, constipation. Another one is sleep. Another one is anxiety or meltdowns. So I would encourage you to listen to this video and see how magnesium can help your child. Well, magnesium is responsible for a host of different reactions in the body. It's a cofactor, which means it's necessary for a variety of biochemical reactions that happen in the body. Now, if we're missing magnesium, these reactions don't happen. What that does is translates into a lot of potential symptoms that we could be experiencing, that our children could be experiencing from magnesium deficiency. And then also what that means is if we're deficient in having symptoms, if we supplement magnesium, we're not only dealing with one symptom, we are potentially getting rid of, solving a bunch of different symptoms with just one intervention. So just a couple of the symptoms that might be applicable to us as autism parents that magnesium can help with are as follows. Constipation, trouble sleeping, mood regulation, because partially that's involved in neurotransmitter production. It can help with anxiety, hyperactivity. It can help with energy production. If our kids are real sluggish and tired, magnesium may be the missing piece. It can help with blood sugar balance, headaches, muscle tension. Um, and even in adults, it can help with heart arrhythmias and high blood pressure. So as you can see, there are so many things that magnesium can take care of. And that's just a very, very cursory list. Think about it. 300 different reactions, over 300 different reactions in the body that magnesium is responsible for, it can solve so many different symptoms. Now, when you look online, for instance, at what foods might contain high levels of magnesium, you can find, you can find top 10 lists, top 20 lists. But I want to point out that although they should contain that level of magnesium, many times they don't. And here's why. When we are farming our food now, we are not replacing magnesium in the soil. And so that leads to a deficiency of magnesium, even in the foods that we eat that should contain high levels of magnesium. So overall, what that means is we are getting less magnesium than we should be. So how else can we get magnesium besides the food that we eat? Well, there are supplements, of course. So my favorite form of magnesium, and there are lots of different forms out there, not just pills and liquids and powders, but also in terms of the chemical type of, of magnesium that we're talking about. So my favorite type is magnesium glycinate. Now, this is my favorite because it is the best absorbed, the easiest on the intestines. So in other words, it's not real irritating like some forms of magnesium are, and it's relatively cheap. So there are also a few other forms of magnesium, like magnesium threonate, which is for brain. It more readily crosses the barrier that separates our blood from our brain. It's called the blood-brain barrier. And so the magnesium threonate more readily crosses that blood-brain barrier and can help with more neurologic symptoms, especially I use this in headaches. Now, magnesium citrate can be used in cases of more severe constipation. Magnesium glycinate does work as well for this, but magnesium citrate tends to be the one I choose when constipation is the main symptom that I'm dealing with. The caveat, however, is that magnesium citrate can tend to cause a little bit of cramping or um, irritation if you take it at too high of a dose, especially if you start with too high of a dose. Typically, how I dose magnesium is to bowel tolerance. In other words, too much magnesium is going to cause, I think of it kind of like a flushing out of the excess magnesium causing a loose stool. We don't want loose stool. So what I do is I say, take one the first day, one pill or one dose, one scoop of a powder, for instance, one the first day, and I usually say take it at night before bed, two the second day, three the third day. Say on the fourth day, the child ends up with a loose stool you had three scoops or three pills the night before, bump that back down to two. Two is the dose at which you did not have any loose stool. So that is the dose that I want you to stay at. That's what I'll typically tell my patients. And that's what I've done with my family, my kids, yeah, patients. 
and that's worked very well. We want to give the child enough magnesium to meet their need, but not so much that we kind of tip over into them needing to sort of flush out and have loose stool from too much magnesium. Another way to get magnesium is through our skin. So there are two ways that I have commonly used, one more commonly than the other, and I'll explain that. The one is by using Epsom salt. Epsom salt, another name for Epsom salt, is magnesium sulfate. And so the magnesium salts you put in the bath, they dissolve. You can let the child sit in the bath. It's kind of a nice calming tool anyway. Put a little lavender oil in there or, you know, another another oil that you like the smell of, that they like the smell of. And you can put magnesium um, salts, so Epsom salts, in there. And what that does is it allows the magnesium to absorb through the skin so in the case, for instance, where a child just will not take a pill, a powder, a liquid of magnesium, this might be one of your only options and it can be a really good option. The other option are magnesium creams or magnesium sprays. Now, this is the one that I use a lot more rarely because I find uh, a lot of the time ch children's skin reacts. Um, even my own personal skin actually reacts to the magnesium gels, the creams, and I get very itchy, almost a burny um, type of sensation. And I've had that with my own kids as well when I've tried the magnesium creams and gels. And so I just don't want to recommend that to people and have them have a bad experience. I'd much rather do the Epsom salt baths or a liquid or a powder or even a capsule magnesium. I find those to be much better tolerated and you can get a higher dose in. Well, thank you for joining me. I hope you have learned a little bit more today about magnesium and that this has given you confidence in helping your child and creating their autism game plan. I'd love to hear from you. I'd invite you to email me at joya at yourautismgameplan.com with any feedback that you have or on topics that you'd like to see covered in future videos. And remember, be gentle with yourself. You're doing a great job.